So in this video, uh, I'm going to take a snippet of C++ code and paste into an online compiler and just run some valuations. And before I do everything here, um, I should probably change the formatting so that I, I get rid of the the numbering. And the numbering can be uh, very good for identifying um, where a particular line of code occurs, but um, at the moment we don't really need it, so we just um, take out those numbers and I'll use an online compiler just to run the estimation. So let's take the snippet of code. I'm going to leave this in a link in the just below the video and you can run the same code by downloading the Word document. So I copy this code and then I go into an online compiler and um, we actually have one here. Um, so this is online uh, gbd.com. There, there are other compilers available. I'm just going to take this seg segment of code out, just delete, and then paste. And because it's in the Word document, it should paste in, because the original code comes from a Word document, it should paste in relatively quickly. Okay, so what's in here? Um, well, we have these parameter values to start off with. And we're saying, what if the stock price is 100, the exercise 100, the risk to rate is 3%, dividend 7, volatility 20%, and the time period is 0 0.5. I could run that estimation and see what value um, we uh, recover. And I pause for a second, but we're getting a value here of 478193. And um, now we could raise that value maybe to 5000. And delete out the one and run. And uh, I'll pause the screen also for this. And we get a value, again, not so far away, uh, 478247. So it's a... Uh, the code actually is not that fast, largely because we have a static type tree and it's two-dimensional. But what we might do is just compare uh, the actual code in here against what we've been doing in our in our um, in the notes uh, so far. So largely, if we recall, we had a in this instance we had a stock price of forty, an exercise of forty-two up and down 10%, 12% risk free rate and we had to work out a risk neutral probability and then we had to uh, put in place this backward induction um, and that's based on these formulas P equal to ERT minus D over U minus D and then F uh, is equal to the risk neutral probability times the value of the option the stock price goes up plus one minus the stock price one minus the risk neutral probability if one minus the risk neutral probability times the option value if the stock price goes down and then e negative rt has been a discount factor if we go back into the code for a moment and just take a brief look um we're largely doing something similar here um now, U and D are obtained using Cox-Ross-Rubenstein methodology. So Cox-Ross-Rubenstein proposed, if we go to the final slide here, that U is equal to E to the power of sigma square root of the time step. And the time step is the number of, it's the total time period divided by the number of steps. So that delta T is the time step the total maturity divided by the number of time steps and then d is equal to e negative q sigma square root of delta t or d is equal to one minus u uh, if we go back into our code for a moment 
we can see that that's precisely what we've done here. u is equal to the exponential factor. v is the volatility, or sigma, times the square root of the time step, where the time step is being defined as the, the total maturity divided by the number of steps, n being the number of steps in the specification that you laid out. Um, in setting out uh, the two-step tree, which we have down here, we have to set out a two-dimensional um, two uh, array, and that involves invoking this vector um, command here. Um, then we define the parameters in terms of the uh, delta t, the u and the d, and then p here is equal to the risk neutral probability. Now if we didn't have dividend yield we could take out q, but we have a dividend yield so we leave in q here for the moment and the p here is equal to e to the power e negative r minus t multiplied by the time step minus d. Okay, so we can check that against against um, the formula that we had before. So here we had e r t minus d over u minus d. The only change that we're really making here is that instead of r, we have r negative q by not the total maturity, the time step. So that would be delta t more precisely. Delta t for the uh, time step. Okay, so so we have this uh, risk neutral probability. Then we have to build a tree, and it's a two dimensional tree that we build. That's very memory intensive. There are better um, types of trees that are uh, involve less uh, use of memory, but it's convenient in terms of just laying out um, how the tree would be structured. We've got to define uh, the values of the tree. So basically this segment of code here actually relates to what we would have done here in the question where we started off and said stock price is 40, was going up by 10, down by 10, and we build the tree. We put in the stock prices. And once we estimate the stock prices, then like in terms of the code, we come back here and we say, okay, what's the value of the option at, uh, at the terminal nodes? So if it's, if it's a call, it's S minus K or S minus X, maximum S minus K. And if it's a put, it's K minus X or X minus the exercise minus the, the relevant stock price. So again, to just understand the logic here, once we build the tree, next step is to calculate the intrinsic value of the options. In this case, it's a put option, so we use the specification. And likewise, in the for the C++ code, we're doing the same here. We we are picking with the pick. Is it a call or is it a put? If it's C, then we're getting a call. Otherwise, we're it's a put. Last step then, or a one of the last steps then involve doing this backward recursion or backward induction and so basically once we generate the terminal value the intrinsic value of the options at the terminal nodes then we've got to apply this backward recursion but at its heart you can see that we are working out for a european option for a european option we work out the value of if you like this p e negative r t p by the value the risk neutral probability by the value of the option if the stock price goes up by one minus p times the value of the option the stock price goes down so that line of code here corresponds to what we're doing here this backward induction formulas that we're using to get the european option we take the preceding values and we plug them in for FU and FD. And then once we get that value, it goes one node back. And likewise here, we take the 960, 
FD, FU is 240, multiply by risk neutral probability, 1 minus risk neutral probability, get 4759, we put in here, and again we take those two values from here and here, and do the same again. So we enter into a loop, and we keep performing the same exercise over and over again, until we get back to the original node, the original nodes, the starting node, initial node, is this up zero zero. That's the starting node, so that would be the value of the option. If the option, however, is not European, otherwise, else, if it's uh, American, then we've got to decide we take the maximum of the intrinsic value or the holding value. And for the put option, the maximum of the intrinsic value or the holding value the holding value is the time value we would have associated with the European options like this here. Um, but we've got to work out at each node, is it better to exercise early or is it better to hold the option? And again, we've seen something similar here. When we looked at the American option, when we worked out the holding value, we then had to compare the intrinsic value. So for a put option, it's maximum x minus s. If this is 36 and the strike was 42, then that would give us an intrinsic value of positive 6. 6 is superior to the holding value, 4759. You would take this value, plug in, and that's why our American option here for the put at least is significantly, well, a little bit higher than the value the option for the European pot. So the Euro American pot here is higher than the American than the European pot and that is because it was optimal to exercise early and realize the six as opposed to accepting the four seven five nine. In the C code that we run in the compiler, we actually are doing the same thing. It's that little decision rule take the maximum of the intrinsic or the holding will give us will mean that if the intrinsic is higher we'll take the value on and it indeed turns out to be higher now i've run this estimation with this code and i get this value four seven eight uh two four another a uh, snippet of code here um down below um and i just put that a little bit further on and it runs the value of the options. Again, it's a similar type of code, same type of structure basically, but in this instance, the code actually will output the value of the American call, value of American put, um, value of European call, value of European put. So we just copy, go back into our uh, online compiler. Again, the online compiler is at this web address and we just put some just put that in and we'll paste and um, we'll look at the values in this instance I've reported the values here we can take it down a notch doesn't have to be a thousand could be a hundred let's just run those values and see what comes out I'll pause okay so we get a value for the call for the put American call American put in we can observe that the American call, the European call, and the American call have the same value. Now, if we rerun this estimation and change the stock price to 110, it should change the value of the option. So I'll delete out as, as a zero, put in one, get 110. So the stock price have just pushed up. And again, we'll run this experiment again. I'll pause. I'll pause the screen, and we have some output. And what we observe again is, yes, the European put is less than the American put. And so the American put is higher by 20 cent. But as regards the call option, European call and American call, the value is the same. And again, this comes down very basically to the fact that we don't have an entry here for dividend yield. It's just assumed that the dividend is, is zero. And that's why we're getting those um, 
same values for the American coal and European coal. 